Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this video is gonna be about this trunk build in this 300C estate um, and then uh, yeah I don't think I'm gonna break it up to separate videos how to build the m what whatnot it's just gonna be one video for the whole trunk um, yeah quite quite complex and, and it'll be probably a long video but hopefully you will like it so what stage am I at? So um, I made a platform for the sub for the single reason that um, anything I build has to be safe and not just, you know, the fact that you have to build something to fulfill the requirements of the competition rules, but, you know, common sense, it has to be safe. The previous install, I put an Emperor in that was sliding in the car and had the sub box right on the top which was just sitting there by gravity and you don't even want to imagine what happens in in a accident yeah so um the floor is is pretty uneven so i had to do a fair amount of measurement in the back that panel is raised with a single layer but here at the front you can see it's raised with three layers of three or three quarters of an inch uh, mdf at the back, there are two bolts, one there, one there, um, M5 bolts going into rib nuts, which were fitted in the chassis. And then at the front, it was pretty easy because there's a lip here uh, going in a good one and a half inch. And then I could just use a long bolt going through that and bolt it from underneath. So there are four M6 bolts um, securing this, this plate in place. So this is gonna be, you know, the foundation for anything I, I, I build on the top of it, well, the sub box, and then the sub box can be bolted onto this, which will be fairly easy. You will be able to get through the speaker mounting or anything inside of the box. Just bolt the box down and it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so yeah, this is where it starts. Then uh, I'll update you on, on the box construction. So this is the main structure of the sub box. Um, it looks pretty small, uh, especially when you place these two subs on the top like that. Um, I shared a picture of of this setup in this current state um, on forums. I wanted to see what people say. You know whether we have magnets inside of the box or outside. Space is not necessarily a concern because these subs are pretty pretty rare in the way that um, they require a very small sealed space and they can drop stupidly low. Um, I couldn't even really compare these subs to anything on the current market. There are not many that are capable to do anything like what these subs do. So it's, it's, it's a big shame that they discontinued these, Jesus, like what, probably like 20 years ago. So yeah, if you have one of these, then um, I would advise, you know, not to sell it, keep it for the future and make sure that, you know, it's, it's, it's kept um, and stored properly. So, um, so that's the main structure of the box now. You can see the bracing inside. And, and from that point of view, it's a bit of a shame when, when I, I place the subs the other way around, then you can't see much of that bracing. Um, there's gonna be perspex right in front of it with artwork on it. Uh, but you will still be able to see through, see what's inside of the box. Yes, now you can't see the cones, the the classic PG cones, which have LEDs in them. Um, but if I keep the subs facing up like these, then I could place a mirror to the bottom of the box. So when you stand here, you can see the cones from the mirror moving. And you can also see the magnets like that with lights placed in the right places to show uh, certain things like the spider of the sub because um, we tried lights washing from here then you can see the the second layer of the sp spider as well because this sub has two sets of spiders as you see proper bonkers it's a dual core sub with an extra terminal for the for the lights on the on the comb um, 
yeah, it looks it looks a bit tight because the owner wanted to have enough space behind the box so he can put in his cases and other things, which was a big mistake with the previous install that I've mentioned a few times. And um, yeah, we can't come any further than that, but that kind of limits everything because the higher you want, wanted the, the buffer, the less depth you would have, and then you don't have enough for mounting the sub. So we had to go down to the point where we could have enough depth for the sub and that's that's about it and to be fair once i modeled it it was just enough because now we have this way if the magnets are out we have 1.5 cubic foot for each sub so three cubic foot combined and if the magnets are in then we have 2.6 which are we, well that that box box size is still enough for these subs in sealed they require a really, really small box. They are even happy in just a single cubic foot each. Um, but then, yeah, you, they have more power handling and the F3 rises a bit, but I think they would still play the low notes pretty, pretty well. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna carry on with the box to stiffen it up, make it stronger, uh, add extra little panels to them because then the side panels will have joining points with the sub box you know we'll have to figure out how to make a design that side will be for an extra battery and the monoblock for the subs and then this side will be for another 2 amps processor power distribution and so on so uh yeah let's crack on with with these so where are we at yeah after a, a weekend and a few days this is where the setup is now, so I thought to take another video to explain a couple of things to you. So this is just the sort of first piece to the side panel. It's bolted on a two points over there, and there there's going to be a board point inside here to the battery panel. Once that's done, that's going to determine the distance and then I have to copy that the same way to this side to make it symmetric. Um, Amprec. We had to have access to the spare wheel, so it was crucial to mount the whole rack uh, properly, safely, and then still having a really easy access to, to the spare wheel. As you can see, there are holes, two holes each side for the fans, for air circulation. So one side is gonna blow, the other side is gonna suck the air out of the rack because there's a perspex coming on the top with artwork and all sorts of fancy things. Cables will run down through those holes as you see. And um, first, I had a different idea about how to fix the rack down, but um, I had to screw that, change that, and then this has become the, the final solution. It's just a piece of three mil steel um, with heat shrink on it, so it looks a bit better. And it works like a nice little gear. You can turn it and then the whole rack lifts up. You can get to the spare wheel easily. That's the factory battery, which is now pretty close to the other battery, not like before, so they can be linked. And then once you put the rack back, it's as simple as that now, locked. That bolt that holds that piece of steel also holds this piece of wood in place, which jams the battery in place. That's completely um, in-housed. It's against the wall, outside wall, so there's literally not a millimeter of gap between the battery and, and that piece. All the wooden bit is, is glued, screwed, nailed, everything, and then bolted down. Uh, that section is bolted in the back to the outside skin and then also underneath the Amprec I may have to lift it back again so you can see <laughs> underneath the Amprec you can see those two bolts which hold that panel as well same on the other side um, so then both sides are bolted at three points and then all the panels will be kind of interlocking to each other. Um, 
but fundamentally as you could see that base plate that i made for the subs that's pretty much the like the motherboard for for everything in in the boot that gives you the center that gives you um, the main uh, fixing point the sub box is bolted down to that uh, with four bolts and then all the trim panels are going to be bolted to the sub box so now i have to yeah finish these pieces first on this side um, there's not going to be access to the amp and the dsp well a direct um, access you would have to take the panels out to get to them but on this side we have to make sure that you can easily get to the fuses um, those two fused distribution blocks if it would be nice to have the, the matching ones but they were supplied by the client and um, actually that phoenix gold wasn't used before but he had it and i'm like you know what that's that beautiful piece and just like the subs that brand is very close to his heart so let's put it in uh two more led controllers over there with the earth block so um yeah we have to have access to those in a really short time according to the rules so i'm gonna make like a window frame so that panel because there's gonna be a perspex each side behind this cutout um then that will be able to come out easily and then you can get to the fuses so yeah this is where it is now then uh, i crack on with the panels and then once i'm at a stage with all the panels that it's it's pretty much looking finished then uh yeah there's another update panels are fabricated um so i, I thought to show you a step uh, when um, I do the edge filling because obviously we don't want to see edges like that or gaps like that or in the on the other side so I must everything out there's gonna be more than just you know filling the gaps here but we just go step by step then um, also I thought to show a couple of things to you I might have showed it earlier the mounting for this panel so there's one board down there um, M4 bolts into threaded inserts and two over there and you won't see any of those because once let's say for example this panel goes in place then this hides those two on each side and then once the big panel over the amps go in then that hides that one so also that panel that goes down that's going to interlock all the surrounding panels it pushes side panels out and it pushes that panel to against well against the perspex that's going to be in front of the sub box so there's actually nothing needed for that panel at the bottom because that panel coming in here is going to push it that way and then this panel is going to be held up top over there with one bolt into the sub box one on each side again you can't see it plus there's another panel on the top coming across so everything will be hidden yet very strong um, and nothing is going to move around rattle around but it can take literally three minutes to take all the panels out so yeah let's do a bit of filling alrighty so this is after I don't know a few days um, let's say 70% of the wiring is done um, still the fan circuits and the LED lights coming coming in our are coming tomorrow Ooh, I'm gonna be tired I think <laughs> um, but I thought to show you this stage because this might be the the last shot from this video because um, the next video that what you will see will probably be the final finished product so what do we have here right now we've got the as 300.2 running the mid base which is quite an overkill then we have the 100.4 running the mids and the highs uh, a 3k monoblock from Clayton running those two beasts those wires that you can see there, that those are just temporary for now i just wanted to wire them in so you can see the lights 
from the black purse packs from the box so it's going to be a feature um, when the subs will move you will see the lights moving from that mirror so even if now we have the subs inverted we can still see the cones which is uh, something that I, I wanted to achieve the box inside is is formed all around it doesn't necessarily add much to the sound but um, it's gonna look cool for sure then that's a proper old school distribution block that's what's gonna trigger the remote uh, for the amplifiers for the fans the LED lights and then that is the power side for the battery the LED controllers the fuse distros of distributions so yeah this is pretty much pretty much it for for this video guys and uh, watch out for the next one because that's gonna be way way more exciting when it's all fully fully finished let me know what you think guys please feel free to comment subscribe and share the video um, and hopefully I can talk to you very soon take care